was actually um, one of our the sales director at CloudShare chatting with us. Um, but I would love to again open up to everyone here. Any questions that you have, and again, like if there is something, I'm no, uh, I'm not currently an administrator, so I don't know who is. Just to make sure that we don't have this close out on us again, um, Richard. I don't know if you're still here. I got you, I Lee. Richard, yeah. What, what do you need, Lee? I got you. Just to make sure that I'm okay. So I'm an organizer, and I'm able to. So Lee, would you be willing to give us an overview of CloudShare for anybody who's not familiar with it and just kind of the, the benefits, pros and cons, things we need to know? Perfect. So as I made mention already, CloudShare is a virtual IT lab provider. That's the high level nutshell view of CloudShare. And what we're doing is we're able to prepare an environment same way that Viggy has done with his learners. And once an environment has actually been provisioned, we're then able to like prepare it and saved into a template. We're able to then replicate that at scale for individuals. So in the case of training, which I know the majority of us here are for, um, we're able to now then empower our students to get a hands-on learning experience. So, you know, and feel free to chime in, ask any questions while I'm going through this, but, I, I want to show off the student experience, and this is in a slightly different mechanic to the way that um, Viggy had demonstrated his um, setup. So Viggy's focused predominantly on self-paced learning, where a student's going to guide through a number of different tasks, potentially have to finish tasks before they can progress into the lab itself. Whereas what I'm going to showcase is a um, scheduled like a class session, so an instructor-led class session. And I'm going to start at the end result of once you've already done all the development, the customization of an environment, and actually want to get, th this is the student login. So once I received an emailed invitation or accessed it through any other type of portal, I can then dive into the actual platform itself and now start getting hands-on with whatever software has been, pre um, you know, has been prepared for me beforehand. Um, now, over and above the actual hands-on experience with the software and, and infrastructure, we have some other assets that can be built together. So in this case, we have an environment that has some customized rich text images, embedded videos, which can be how-to guides, getting started with the software, and any other type of information. And I already see a question here with regards to the trainer's point of view, 100%, we'll dive into that in a moment. So, here we can have everything from rich um, to rich text, images, embedded videos, most importantly, animated GIFs, and dive right into the actual virtualized hardware itself. And the hardware, keep in mind, can be your own. We have a catalog of ready-to-use uh, machines. In fact, all the machines here come straight out of a library of CloudShare um, VMs available. And we actually have a Microsoft agreement, so all licensed, uh, all um, Windows machines available from our library are fully licensed at no additional cost for taking advantage of. And as a student, I now have full control of actually connecting to the SQL Server, customizing it, um, running tests, and so on. I have any type of external resource available to me um, using an URL from the administrator. So whether that be a training resource, how-to guide, um, a potential webinar sign-up page, I can go ahead and take advantage of that all in one learning experience. And any materials I need to download, I can also do that here. So Lee, just a quick question for you. Um, yeah. Not all of us were on your previous okay. session because there was two sessions happening simultaneously. Okay, sure, yeah. Um, so, so if you were trying to do remote labs, let's say you had a learning subscription and you wanted to do um, you know, on-demand learning, do you guys provide the environments that would then give a remote lab access so no instructor has to be involved or anything? And can you provision for an allocated time period? So let's say part of your subscription gave you two weeks of lab access. What is it? Is it timed and uh, you know doled out to the user in that kind of a respect? Absolutely. So th uh, this is not going to be a deep dive demo into CloudShare, and please do feel free to communicate with us post this. Um, my email address is as easy as it comes. That's very intentional. So lee at cloudshare.com, L-E-E. -E. Um, and we can continue and show more about it. But to answer your question, the answer is a simple yes. 
um, we have what is an automated control mechanism for every single environment provisioned in CloudShare. It's going to define how long an environment will be in storage and exist for. And during that storage time, how long can an individual user actually access that environment? Two crucial mechanics when it comes to um, cloud-based resources where you pay for what you consume. And with that type of level of automation, we're helping control your resource consumption and immediate direction, you know, direct um, connection to costs. Um, then when it comes to how your students can engage with that, we have in our actual um, training scheduling in the CloudShare UI as an admin, you can schedule a class to be a self-paced class so people access the environment as they see fit after you've sent them an invitation. Or we have full available API to integrate exactly the way Viggy did, for example, into his, oh, sorry, I was thinking about a session you weren't part of. Um, Viggy, who's on the call and was co-presenting with me in the session prior, um, has a LMS platform called Docebo, but basically any other LMS, you're able to integrate the CloudShare instances to automatically provision when a student has reached a certain point or requests the lab. So very much so, we are able to empower your self-paced training. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you. Sorry, I had to come off mute. <laughs> no, no, trouble, no trouble at all. Um, and I already had a request um, from, I believe, someone else about can we have a look at the trainer's point of view? And absolutely. So There's as also an a couple questions in for Viggy. So, Viggy, you're a popular guy. I mean, I always thought so. They Viggy, wanted... if you haven't seen the chat yet. They want to know if um, Viggy, if you're offering the lab access at zero cost to the customers, and how long you're typically allowing them access for. Um, good question. Um, so our standard labs uh, for like basic users, we normally give them uh, 12 hours over a week. So we give them a week to use it, but they only have 12 hours um to basically you know complete exercises and uh, we started off at 10 but we, we had enough complaints to to extend it to um 12 hours and it's more than enough time there's plenty of time to do those exercises but though as the of course the courses become more complicated like our troubleshooting and our uh, delivery so for our partners we do actually offer uh a very complex course. So we're talking like a five-day course. So for, for them, it's a little bit different. So technically speaking, they have in hours, about 30 hours of lab time to complete the exercises. Again, over over a week. Yeah, I think we give them a week. and But they have 30 hours, which is a considerable amount of time. Um, and that's it. But as uh, Lee just, just mentioned, um, a, a lot, these, these times I'm saying now, are very very flexible and we we also find out not weekly but i'll say like probably on a monthly basis we're making slight adjustments and it's you know it's as soon as you make an adjustment on what cloud check calls like a, a policy which is a time policy um of course it's affected across all labs so just say we we say we don't need 12 hours anymore everyone just to give them 11 hours of time we'll change the policy and it'll be like a, affected immediately across uh, all systems i hope that's um, answered your question and obviously, I'll, I'll, you know, it depends on like the, the, the customer of CloudShare. I mean, our systems are like fairly complex, but I'm sure that you, you have customers Lee, that, you know, probably would just say one or two hours. Like in a demo environment, you probably wouldn't want more than a couple of hours of time to be uh, on the lab. Exactly that. And, you know, there's user, customers of CloudShare that are taking environment, like um, a learning environment as simple as a single machine with some preloaded yeah files to review. Um, you know, there's so many different applications. So whether it's a complex, multi-layered, um, networked environment with virtual appliances, cybersecurity tools to be able to deploy malicious malware, or whether you're going to deliver a Microsoft Office training course and you need the Office pre-installed on the virtual machine. Um, you know, that's all possible. Um, and I see another question here with how the provisioning will be done for different courses um, and uh, you, if you provide yeah. user unlimited access. So I hope that the last question, the last answer kind of addresses that as well, but provisioning, you just have different blueprints, right, Biggie? I do. I'm not seeing these questions at all, by the way, but I'm just going to answer. It's a, uh, we'll go to meeting, but yeah, not important. Oh, 
Yeah, Mr. Zima, I say now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so um, yeah, it's, according to, uh, it's according to the cloud share. So the provisioning is done according to um, the, the blueprint. Well, actually, there's not, I, I take that back completely. There's provisioning <laughs> and, and there's blueprints. Okay, so you could have like, I don't know, for example, I said we have about 40, just over 40 different types of blueprints. And according to the class or the customer, you can decide which, how to provision time according you know irrespective of the blueprint so you know if you have if you have an important customer and you know they need more time on the system then you would offer them like a you know a longer provisioning time than uh, the regular customer for example so they do they act kind of independently so we have about and, two uh, minutes how is it yeah how is it done it's done it's like a mouse click it's very simple um and we are being checked on time over here so yeah. i know we have people dropping off for more sessions so immediately i just want to make sure that i'm thanking biggie for joining the session and being able to share his insights to everyone else who's participated reviewed gave given us their um insights into how they've completed things and how they manage their courses thank you i'd love to hear from more people that are either using virtual labs today and potentially want to know what is out there are you using the best platform possible that suits your needs um potentially it's time to review what's you know is there a better option is cloud share maybe a better fit for you if you have general questions with regards to best practices and training on some of the topics that we have reach out to us as well um i'm available on pretty much all the social medias but um again email lee at cloudshare.com um subject lines letting us know that it's regarding to the sedma presentation will be fantastic and i'm pretty sure that these recordings will be shared as well or the previous session recording will be at least so viggy if there's nothing else that you want to add as well thank you again to the sedma organizers thanks for giving us the time thank you very much lee thank you viggy really enjoyed your presentation thank you. have a great thank day you very much. and hope you'll all join the rest of our sessions have a great day